This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Ayer. Yeah, I got my mask on still. <laughs> and Bridget, we <laughs> want to thank again everybody uh, who helped make our recent online auction such a big success. We normally have a dinner at this time of the year and just weren't able to do it this year. But uh, we decided, well, maybe we could have just the auction part of it and do it online. And a whole bunch of people stepped up and really made it uh, fun and active. And it was very productive for Catholic Radio as well. So if you were one of the businesses who donated an item, hey, thank you very much. We really needed your support. If you were one of the bidders, well, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. And also the... uh, underwriting sponsors, the businesses who really kicked in a a sizable chunk of money to make the event successful. It was a success, and thank you very much. Yeah, and if you're listening to us and you're on the Facebook platform, we're not telling you what platforms to be on, but if you are on the Facebook platform, we are there, so you come find us at Catholic Radio Indy, and we're about up to 900 people, so that you can always get could good information there and And if you're not why not (laughs) (laughs) that's okay well hey we're going to get right into our topic i'm really excited about it because um, we've got a guest who's going to answer all of our catholic questions because i know he's got lots of catholic answers absolutely that no doubt the boy that was a good tease jim okay well we're going to be talking about we're we're in the midst of all these culture wars and the civil unrest and it's we need Catholic evangelization more than ever right now. And so we're going to have our guest, um, our veteran Catholic defender of the faith, Tim Staples, who is the Director of Apologetics and Evangelization at Catholic Answers. Uh, Tim Staples, welcome to Faith in Action. It is great to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. And I am just so glad that you're here because there are so many we're, so many things are being uh, fired away at us as Catholics, and it's like yeah. the the ground just keeps moving, and it's really really hard to deal. Um, yeah. I, I I do want to say, hey, that you are going to be in town at Holy Rosary at a really cool uh, event. It's a a forty hour devotion at Holy Rosary, and it's going to be October six, October fifth, sixth, and seventh, and you're going to be here to speak. So so our listeners, you can get in on that. Um, so I just wanted to tease that. Um, Tim, tell me a little bit about your background. You weren't Catholic uh, growing up, were you? No, I wasn't. In fact, I was raised a Southern Baptist, and from the time I was 8, 9, 10 years old, the only thing I ever heard about Catholicism is you guys were nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that might be partially true. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, well, that would have been more of a compliment, though. At worst, you were the whore of Babylon, you know, Satan's greatest masterpiece. I mean, that's what I was raised with, and this isn't to put anybody down, or and I know we've come a long way in ecumenical dialogue, but that's where I come from, and I got away from my faith in my teen years. I came back through some wonderful brothers and sisters in the Assemblies of God, back to the faith of my childhood, and a little different twist with a Pentecostal twist, but uh, I would later become a, a minister in, a, in an Assembly of God community, a youth minister, and I was absolutely on fire, and I always had a passion for Catholics, and by the way, I still do, but in a different way. <laughs> uh, I had a passion to, to convert Catholics yeah. back then, but uh, by God's grace, I met actually a, a, a young Catholic Marine when I was serving in the United States Marine Corps, who was the first Catholic I ever met that was ready, willing, and able to defend his faith, and we basically went at it for a year, <laughs> a year straight. And, you know, I tell you, I'm forever grateful to Sergeant Matt Dula because I fought with everything I had. He gave me answers. He gave me books. And that really started me on what would be a three-year intensive study to prove Catholicism wrong, and that's why I'm Catholic. <laughs> wow. And, you know, we, we hear so many other people that have had a similar story that come from the, you know, Protestant background or the non-Catholic Christian background, and it's, God has a sense of humor, you know, when you think about it. <laughs> and, and, Tim, I know uh, I've heard you speak, and I know you've still got a little bit of that uh, uh, Southern Baptist Pentecostal preacher in you, and uh, <laughs> at addressing a group, it's, it's unusual to see a room full of Catholics shouting, Amen! But that happens sometimes <laughs> at your talks, doesn't it? 
You know what? I, I tell you, uh, years ago, a, a dear friend and mentor of mine said, Tim, you know, you really got to call it, tone it down on the <laughs> and stuff. And I tried, but it just didn't work. I, it's just the way it's just the way I was raised, and and you know, pr- praise God for it because um, I love my Baptist brothers, my Pentecostal brothers. They love Jesus, and and we have so much in common in our belief in the in the Blessed Trinity, the hypostatic union, divinity of Christ. There's so much that we have in union with one another, and in these days of insanity, we need to emphasize that perhaps all the more, because we need to stand together against forces in our culture. We have a culture of death. That prophetic phrase of Pope St. John Paul the Great is really coming to its unholy fruition right now in a culture of death and violence, and we as people of God, as baptized Christians do need to stand together. But at the same time, we also need, as Catholics, to answer the call to evangelism, because ultimately, the only answer to what ails our culture in this world is the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we alone possess as Catholics. So while we join arms where we can with our brothers and sisters of of all faith, in fact, we join where we can with all people of goodwill, we must understand that our help comes from the Lord, and ultimately, as I said, the healing comes through our one holy Catholic and apostolic faith. Now, Tim, one term that's always associated with you these days is apologist. And for people who are not familiar with that term, uh, you're an apologist for the Catholic Church, and at first glance that might sound like, well, you go around to Apologizing for being Catholic. Uh, that's not what apologist, apology is, uh, apologetics, there I got it, is all about. <laughs> that's right, and I do often get that when I, when I say I'm, uh, I'm an apologist, you know, like on airplanes or something. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, apologetics is the science of giving reasons why we believe what we believe. The, the, the root word there for, uh, that, that uh, undergirds etymologically apologetics is apologia, which means an answer or a response, and it's actually found in the Bible in First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Our first pope commands all of us. He says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts always and be ready to give everyone a reason for the hope that lies within you and do it with meekness and with respect. That's the heart of apologetics, giving answers why we believe what we believe, and there has never been a more important time than right now to be able to defend Holy Mother Church and present the truth against all of the caricatures and the the anti-Catholic propaganda in our culture, and even often, and I say most often unwittingly from our separated brothers, they so often repeat things about Catholicism, and I did myself because I was taught from the time I was a child, well, Catholics say this, when in fact, no, that's not what Catholic te- <laughs> Catholics teach. So it is absolutely imperative for us as Catholics to, to learn why we believe what we believe and pray for wisdom and boldness to share this wonderful faith of ours. Now, and what would you tell somebody, what advice would you give somebody who says, oh, I go to church every Sunday and I pray daily, but, you know, as far as talking to other people about it, I might get it wrong, I... I, I I I just let somebody else do that. Yeah, in fact, one of my talks uh, coming up at the conference at Holy Rosary is going to be evangelism. What is it, and why do we need it? There's a wonderful document I'm going to be sharing a lot from, uh, Pope St. Paul VI. Unbelievable. It's the most complete document on evangelism I've ever read by far nothing close. It's called Evangelii Nunziandi of December 8th, I believe it was 1975. Just an incredible document. And in there, among the many nuggets, Pope St. Paul VI informs us that uh, uh, evangelization is not an option for Catholics. It's not a nice option. It goes to the core of who we are as Catholic Christians, and it is a mandate placed on us by virtue of the sacraments of initiation that we have received, as St. Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 
verses 15, 16, he says, Woe be unto me if I preach not the gospel, for necessity is laid upon me. If I do it freely, I, I receive a reward. But he says, uh, whether, I, wh- whether I do it willingly or not, he says, necessity is laid uh, upon me. In fact, St. Paul would say to a young bishop that he had ordained, St. Timothy, in 1 Timothy 4, 16, he says, Take heed unto the doctrine, for in so doing you will both save yourself and them that hear thee. So we're talking about salvation, as Pope Paul VI says, and not only, the sal- not only is the salvation of the souls we're talking to, not only are they on the line, but our own is on the line as well, because ultimately Catholicism, Christianity, is a religion of love, and love wills the good of the other. If we are not sharing the gospel, that's not love. Absolutely. And I want to get to a, a comment that you made at the missionary, making a missionary disciples, the gathering of disciples event here in Indianapolis, which was a virtual event, but I had the opportunity to watch it. And you were the keynote speaker for that, that recent event. And yes. you mentioned something about, you know, loving others and, you know, you know, the, the, the kind of the joke about St. Francis, you know, use words, you know, live the gospel, use words only if necessary, which you said kind of debunked it, that that wasn't necessarily that he actually said that or not. But the right. point you were trying to make was that, yes, we have to live the gospel, but we have to also speak. Could you just yes. uh, briefly talk about that? Absolutely. Yes. And it is a popular myth that, that St. Francis said to his brothers when they were going to a particular village preach preach the gospel, use words when necessary. Actually, he never said that. That's actually a myth. But, but as I always point out, even if he were to have said that, mm-hmm. that is a poetic way of emphasizing the importance, and I'll go back to uh, Pope St. Paul VI, especially in paragraphs 21 and 22 of that great document, Evangelii Nunciandi. In paragraph 21, he emphasizes that point that the first act of evangelization is a life lived for Christ, vivified by the Holy Spirit. Living that witness is the initial act of evangelization, and heaven knows with the recent priest scandals and such, we've learned the hard way uh, that truth once again, that if our lives are not lived up to the message, our message simply will not be heard. And we need to, in, in a sense re-earn the right uh, as a church to enter into the pu- public square and to be heard by folks. A lot of folks just aren't going to hear us. And so we've got to work hard to live this gospel and love people uh, a- absolutely. However, Pope Paul VI, in paragraph 22, right after he says that a, a-, a life lived, vivified by the Holy Spirit, is the initial act of evangelization, He says in paragraph 22, however, no matter how well a life is lived for Christ, it will always be insufficient. Can I say that again? Yep. Always, always it will be insufficient. Why? Because ultimately a life lived for Christ leads to the question, why? And it's then that we must give reasons. And in fact, Pope Paul VI quotes the same verse I just quoted earlier, 1 Peter 3.15, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts always, and be ready to give everyone a reason for the hope that lies within us. Folks, people need intellectual reasons. Your heart cannot love what your head rejects. We need to present intellectual, as Pope Francis said so beautifully in Evangelii Gaudium, his first apostolic exhortation, fantastic document, paragraph 132, Pope Francis says, that we have been called by God to a new apologetic, a new and creative apologetic that meets the needs of this age of ours where we have an increasing amount of atheism, agnosticism, and skepticism. And confusion. All of us have been (laughs) challenged by our Pope to get out there and evangelize, and we need to be creative about it. Amen. Well, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get into the culture wars and how Catholics are supposed to deal with that in a charitable and Catholic manner. So stay tuned for more Faith in Action. Alexa, what's the weather forecast for today? Alexa, what time is the Colts game today? 
Alexa, remind me to pick up the dry cleaning tomorrow. Has Alexa become a part of your daily routine? Then make sure that routine includes Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Quick, easy access to Catholic programming 24-7. Just say, Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Hi, this is Tim Staples from Catholic Answers Live, and I have to say we love our local radio stations. The reason is without the local Catholic radio stations, we simply can't do what we do, bringing the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the entire world. Please support this radio station now because, my friends, trust me, lives are being changed because of your support. God bless you. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Jim Ganley and I are in the studio, and we're talking with uh, Tim Staples. He's the Director of Apologetics and Evangelization for Catholic Answers, and we're getting into the culture war here. How do you see the culture war? What is it, and what can Catholics do about it? Now you can talk the rest of the time. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, well, um, I tell you, there's never been a more important time for Catholics to engage this, this culture war than right now. And, of course, we all know, or we should know, as Catholic Christians, we are engaged in a culture war, whether we like it or not. Uh, and, in fact, it goes all the way back to First Timothy chapter 6, right, where St. Paul says to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. We are in the midst of spiritual warfare. That's the nature of our existence. Yep. Ephesians 6, 10, and following, right? We could talk about Second Corinthians 10, 4, and, and 5 where we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but prin- against principalities and powers in heavenly places. And I love the way St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 there, we're called to wrestle into obedience, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we're wrestling against principalities and powers, but also against our own fallen natures, mm-hmm. asking God's grace to empower us to overcome. And that's what the culture war is all about, but in a particular way, I'm going to be talking about at the conference how this culture war is to be engaged in the United States. And I focus on 11 Supreme Court decisions, okay, Mm. 11. We're going to go through real briefly that have kind of frame for us, paint a picture for us, the culture war. And And it starts in 1947, I argue, with what seemed to be an innocuous little Supreme Court decision that actually had to do with busing kids to private schools. Ninety-six percent of them were Catholic. It's called Everson versus the Board of Education. And in that decision, the Supreme Court actually upheld the state's rights. It was it, The situation was in New Jersey, but the court upheld the state's rights to actually bus kids and pay out of public funds for uh, underprivileged kids to go to to private, and most, 96% were Catholic schools. But what happened was the court, in the, in the process of writing the opinion, uh, uttered those famous words of separation of church and state, which was, of course, never in the Constitution. But it was in the context of saying, that, and, and I quote, the First Amendment has erected a wall of separation between church and state, a wall into which we cannot allow the slightest breach. And from that period forward, that decision began to be used as a separation of God and state. And I'll tell you, you come to the conference because I'm going to break it down through 11 Supreme Court decisions, but the, but the bottom line is we're in a situation today where Christianity is being persecuted as never before in our country. This would be completely alien to our founding fathers, but here we have it. And what we have to do as Catholics is understand, yes, we must engage politically. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church says in paragraph 2246, that the Church, it's part of the essential mission of the Catholic Church to speak to matters political whenever the essential dignity of man or the salvation of souls requires it. So we are called to engage politically, but we have to understand that the first principle of transformation of any culture is the charity, the love, the grace, the power of Almighty God. And so ultimately, we do more good in our culture by getting on our knees and praying 
for our country, for our leaders, and so forth, than we do of marching down the streets for three months straight or whatever you want to say. We've got to get it into our heads that ultimately, our, as I said earlier, our ultimate healing comes in and through Jesus Christ. But that does. Now, that, of course, that's the first principle. But as Christians, we are called to answer the call of Christ, who calls us to be leaven. And that means, yes, we proclaim the gospel, but then we're called to be leaven. And that means to get in the middle of the culture and transform it from the inside out. So that's where activism, our Christian activism, uh, comes to the fore. And unfortunately, we have been miserable at it for the last 50, 60 years. And the result has been we have liberal, anti-God forces that have basically taken over our culture, from the universities to Hollywood, television, news media, and such. And we've got to take it back. As Kimberly Hahn says it famously, I've heard her say it numerous times, we've got to change this culture one diaper at a time, right? <laughs> change this culture one soul at a time. And, and by being that leaven to transform from the inside out, I want to see Catholic lawyers, Catholic doctors, Catholics on the news, in the news media. We need Catholics on fire for Jesus in every area of our culture. So in, a, in addition to prayer, we have about six minutes left. Um, what, what practical tips can we, can we do? Prayer, go to Mass, go to adoration. And in terms of engaging the culture, you know, yes. what do you... What do you uh, how do we do that? And I even have this, uh, someone asked yeah. me on my social media about, you know, when they see the, the Black Lives Matter, um, yeah. different things going up in their neighborhood, do they talk to their neighbor about that? Or what are some other ideas? Do you have any suggestions for us? You know, do we, do we have a conversation about that? Or you know what yeah. I'm saying? And what are we supposed to do? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, so many Catholics, how many times do you hear this? You know, we don't talk about religion or politics, right? Somehow. Those are my two favorite so... topics. <laughs> That's right. Those are the only topics. <laughs> I can only talk about, you know, the Chargers losing their football games for so long, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what else is there? But the, the bottom line is we have so many Catholics that, that that's their mantra, you know, oh, we don't talk about religion or politics. No, we are called by God to talk about religion and politics because we love Jesus. How can you take Almighty God, Father, I mean, take Almighty God, Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity on your tongue every day or every Sunday, and then not tell somebody about it? Are you kidding me? If you see a good movie you know, our inclination is to say, man, you got to see this movie. This is great. Where well, we're receiving Almighty God on our tongue, and we're not going to tell anybody about it. And when we're talking about issues, like let's take the Black Lives Matter situation. Here we have a group, and, and we were talking before we were on the air, how they're, they're hiding their real beliefs on their, on their uh, national website, taking things off. You don't find the Marxism anymore, and the, at least not the direct we're going to dismantle the family sort of language has been taken off. But that's what Black Lives Matter... I like to make the distinction between Black Lives Matter Incorporated mm -hmm. and the concept of Black Lives Matter. Of course Black Lives Matter, because all lives matter. But you know there's something wrong when you say all lives matter and you get punched in the face for it. There's something really wrong here. And it's rooted in the fact that Black Lives Matter incorporated. Now, I've, I engage these people in the streets here in San Diego. And what you find is there are a lot of average Joes that go out and, and protest at these little, at the peaceful ones. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what Black Lives Matter Incorporated is about. Mm -hmm. These are just your average people who say, hey, man, there's injustice here. I'm going to stand in. But then you have the more informed Black Lives Matter, incorporated people who know exactly what they're about. They're about burning the system down. They're about revolution, Marxism, dismantling the family. And my friends, we've already seen what happens when you dismantle the family. If you look at the African-American community, and th this is not to put anybody down. Th these are government statistics, over 70% 
of black children today are born out of wedlock. They don't have a father. I saw and that. that is devastating because we are made to need mommy and daddy. Life comes from mommy and daddy, and that's not just biologically, it's psychologically, it's spiritually, and it is devastating to the black community not to have the presence of fathers and such. And that is the reason why. See, nobody wants to deal with the facts, the, the, the statistics that say the black community with 13% of the population has over 50% of the crime. In fact, 7% of the population are black males, and, and about 50% plus of, of crimes are committed by black males. This isn't because blacks are inferior to whites or anything silly like that. No, it is because the devil has masterfully entered into the sanctuary of the family, and he knows. And by the way, he's done the same thing in white communities, and our numbers are rising as well. And to the degree the family is dismantled, which is the goal of Black Lives Matter, that's to the degree of chaos you will have in your culture. And of course, the Marxist revolutionists want the chaos because that's when they can take over. But we as Catholic Christians must, and you, you asked about how to engage the culture. Well, as, a, as a, a, a veteran Marine, I can tell you, when you're engaging in combat, you need to know not only your weapons, but you've got to know the weapons of your enemy. And that's what we need. As, we need to be informed as to what is Antifa, what is Black Lives Matter, and what are they trying to do in order for us to, to uh, garner the antidote to help folks, to equip them to be able to en engage and respond to the lies with the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tim Staples, uh, Director of Evangelization and Apologetics at Catholic Answers, thank you so much for being our guest. To see Tim, he's going to be at Holy Rosary Parish here in Indianapolis, October 5th and 6th. And you got to go out there and check them out. So, Tim, thanks so much for being our guest. You gave us a lot to think about. All right. Great to be with you. I can't wait. This is going to be my first real in-person conference in six months. All <laughs> right. virtual. So I'm so excited. I'll see you guys there. Yeah, we'll All see right, you there, Tim. You. God bless. God bless you. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.